I want to apologize on behalf of the Internal Revenue Service for the mistakes that we made and the poor service we provided. Poor service? I think that's kind of an understatement. The IRS admitted to unfairly scrutinizing Tea Party nonprofits last year and conservative groups, but is history about to repeat itself? The agency is proposing new guidelines that may once again unfairly discriminate against conservative groups. Joining us right now is Matt Kibbe. He's the president and CEO of the conservative nonprofit group Freedom Works. Matt, good morning to you. Morning. Okay, so first of all, just at the conclusion of last year, they came out with these new guidelines. How are they different than uh, how they were trying to put the screws to you guys before? You know, they're basically formalizing what they were doing to Tea Party groups on an ad hoc basis, making it very difficult to pol participate in the political process, to do basic civil civic engagement, voter registration. For any Tea Party that organizes a 501c4, this creates a whole new level of complexity that makes it very difficult. Okay, in what way? Well, everything they would do from voter registration to talking about a congressman's voting records either 30 days before a primary or, or 60 days before a general election, talking about judicial nominees 90 days before an election, all of that would be now deemed as political activity and go against the primary purpose of your organization. Okay, uh, you mentioned uh, political activities. We've got a graphic that shows them. Uh, it's the second one we've got in the, in the uh, rundown here. Uh, that would impact get out the vote drives, materials that advocate for a specific candidate, hosting a candidate for an event within 60 days, as you just mentioned, of a general, making financial grants to other groups that explicitly advocate for a candidate. Now, what seems unfair to me is that it, you know, on, on the right, you've got groups, you know, the small mom and pop organizations, uh, Tea Party groups, uh, conservative groups, things like that. On the left, you've got union groups, which are completely not covered by any of this stuff. Yeah, they've, they've decided politically that this grassroots movement on the right, this, this decentralized movement, is their problem in 2014. And they're literally going to try to change the rules in a rushed um, cloaked fashion right before an election, and the unions are exempt from this kind of regulation. It seems pretty extraordinary that they would do this during an election year, doesn't it? I think it's, uh, I think it's patently unfair, and, and you want people to participate. You want people to know more about their candidates. This suppresses that kind of activity and, again, formalizes what they were doing during the 2012 election. Okay, and speaking of during the 2012 election, a lot of people remember, looked like they were unfairly targeting conservative groups. Has that gotten any better? I don't think it has, but you know, think about these groups that spent two, three years sometimes trying to get their 501c4 status, and now they will be told after this 90-day 90, 90 comment period that they have to change their organization again. It's just a way to keep people from focusing on what they should be doing. Sure, and you would like to see as many people as possible uh, write into the IRS and complain about the new regulations, right? You have, you have to raise the public awareness on this. Uh, I would suggest people go to irstarget.com and submit comments to the IRS. We need Congress to get involved. Sure. We need to call for public hearings. All right, uh, Matt Kibbe from FreedomWorks. Sir, thank you very much for telling us what's thank going you. on with the IRS. Great.